All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today we're talking a little bit about methylation issues. And since this topic is a very important one concerning health and chronic disease, I want to go over a few of the things to look for in a person that would give you an indication that they have a methylation problem. You can do genetic testing, and there's value to that. And there's value to dig into the science and to really look at the pathways. And we, we have that science in our office, and we it's something that, that I personally have an interest in. But what's fascinating about methylation is you don't need that to just figure out who has a methylation problem. All you need to do is know what to look for. And what's really exciting about learning about methylation is once you know what to look for, you can see it with your naked eyes every, pretty much all over the place. The problem literally will be staring you in the face. So what do meth methylation problems look like? Now the answer to that question really is methylation problems cause a change in the shape of the tissue of the body that's different from what's normal for human symmetry. People have different colored eyes, different sized noses, mouths, ears. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about significant changes to the normal shape of the human frame and the human structure. And that's an outward sign that something on the inside is a problem. One of my mentors, who I've learned a lot from, Dr. Rakowski, is fond of saying that if you see something wrong on the outside, there's something wrong on the inside. And in this case, it's absolutely true. So the first one we're going to talk about today are epicanthal folds, seen here. And I'm talking specifically about this fold of tissue over the eye. You may see it more on one side or the other. Typically you see it on both, and we all probably know people that have this tissue flap of skin. It's not normal, meaning it's not part of everyone's face. It's an indication that the MTHFR gene SNPs are present. So this people who are walking around with epicanthal folds, you can see that clearly on TV, you can see it in magazines, you can see it in people you meet and talk to every day. It's an indication that they need methylation support, and they're at a higher risk of the chronic diseases that methylation is involved with. Another important one to see on the outside of the body is spina bifida. Spina bifida is basically an error with the neural tube as the neural tube is closing, and we'll go over a few of these today, but the neural tube is the most important part of your body. It forms your brain and spinal cord. And as chiropractors have long, long known, keeping your brain and spinal cord functioning well is, is essential for health, longevity, and optimum performance in, in really anything that you're doing. But spina bifida still in this country is the number one cause of a birth defect. And that also makes it the number one cause or relating to the number one cause of loss of pregnancy, meaning the number one cause of miscarriage in this country are birth defects. And the number one cause or category of birth defects are neural tube defects. So problems with the neural tube are methylation problems. The, the mother's body doesn't have enough nutrition present, cannot form the neural tube correctly because the, the whole process of life runs on vitamins. And if the vitamins aren't there in the right quantity, then life struggles a little bit. So spina bifida is very common. Um, we see it in our office, and it's out there in the general population. So anybody you know with spina bifida or gave birth to a spina bifida baby, there's a methylation issue at play there. Another common one is scoliosis. We are all familiar with this term. And it affects girls more than boys, and there's a reason why that that happens, and that's we're going to save that for another video. But... Um, the research is very 
consistent showing the relationship between methylation genes and and the higher likelihood of having scoliosis and scoliosis occurs during adolescence when there's a lot of bone growth and tissue growth and methylation has a great effect on the ability for cells to divide so if cells are struggling to divide fast enough and tissue is growing there's an opportunity for the tissue not to form correctly and that can lead to scoliosis such as this. Um, now we're looking at Down syndrome, a, a more serious defect because it is in fact a chromosomal problem, which means it came from the mother, most likely from her egg, or it could also come from the father, but it happened before conception. So this is syndromes like this that are chromosome syndromes are methylation problems that started before conception and they will be passed on to all the uh, children all the lineage that will be passed on to every cell after that and that's why those syndromes can be more complex but you, you you can see down syndrome with your naked eye you can look at someone and say they have down syndrome and you know that because of the shape of their tissue their face their ears their mouth their hands is different than what's quote unquote normal or average for humans so that's a great example of how methylation problems can show up on the outside Looking at some more issues here, we're going to talk about Marfan syndrome. And, and we would all remember uh, going to the swimming pool as kids or even, even now that we'll see children at the pool with a dent in their chest. And that's the layman's term for pectus excavatum. And, you know, I didn't know any better when I was younger. And I just thought, oh, what's, you know, there's a dent in their chest. must be harder to breathe. Uh, but really what it, it indicates is it's a bony change. A significant one in the middle of the body. There's your giveaway that it's a methylation issue. So when this baby was forming, the cells that formed the sternum didn't form correctly and there's a change in the shape and it's due to methylation defects. Uh, children and, and patients with this issue are going to have very long slender fingers and they also have uh, one of the risk factors is um, uh, an aneurysm in the aorta. It's the largest blood vessel in the body. And what happens is, is there'll be a basketball player on a team in high school, junior high, tall, plays center, blocking shots, getting rebounds, working really hard, collapses on the court. And it ends up being, you know, a, a fatal injury. And it's basically the, the bursting of the aorta. And I'm not saying this to be morbid. I'm just using it as an, as an example, maybe you've heard about this, but what happens is, is in Marfan syndrome, because of methylation problems, homocysteine levels are higher in the tissue, and that weakens the tissue. And so the pressure from the heart slowly makes a bulge in the aorta, and in some cases, under the right conditions, that bulge can burst, and then the patients lose their life from loss of blood. So, again, Preventable with nutrition, that's our opinion, um, and that's the benefit of looking at these biochemical pathways, uh, get these kids started on nutrients early enough, and maybe that won't happen. Fetal alcohol syndrome changes the shape of the face. It changes the position of the ears, the eyes, and the, and the nose, and that's because alcohol consumption during pregnancy uh, lowers the mother's body levels of B9, folate, the most important, most famous methyl nutrient. So if alcohol affects B9 and changes the shape of the face, well, so can methylation problems. The key being here that some women can give birth to children who look like they have fetal alcohol syndrome, but they never drink a drop. And the reason for that is, is that the methylation genes disturb the folate metabolism in a similar way as consuming alcohol and that's just a interesting correlation there but um, B9 is just so important for pregnancy and every woman who's thinking of being pregnant should be working with uh, the right kind of folate and the right kind of nutrition. Another uh, more serious birth defect is cleft palate and you'll notice again it's not on the left side or the right side it's right in the middle this is 
a risk for children because they cannot suckle and they cannot feed themselves and so they can die of malnutrition. And this is again an example of the neural tube not closing. So we don't know if it was a minute or five hours or a day and a half, but for some point in time this neural tube when it was trying to close didn't get this part shut. And without shutting the neural tube the baby had to continue to develop with this part left open and that's why these tissues are not touching. So you see a uh, cleft palate on a baby, you know mom, you know dad, you know baby, you know family needs to be uh, working on their methylation nutrients to um, improve their biochemistry, balance their bodies out and live that optimum life. We're looking again at Klinefelter syndrome. Um, another syndrome, it's chromosomal. It's coming from mom and dad before conception. So um, patients with syndromes like this are going to benefit from methylation nutrition as they are definitely carrying methylation genes that are affecting uh, cell division and detoxification. Looking at some more uh, methylation issues, uh, horseshoe kidney. So they have enough kidney mass, they can filter the blood, but the risk here is that because the kidneys aren't separated, if one gets infected, then the other, well, it's connected. So there's only one shot. So um, in a normal person, there's two kidneys. If one gets infected, the other can take over. So here, that's the main risk. But again, it's a textbook methylation issue because it's a midline. Right in the middle, it's a defect. And that's the pattern over and over and over again. Another issue we see with methylation are Arnold Chiari malformations. So we're looking at, on the left, you're looking at a normal formed brain with the brain and cerebellum inside the skull. And yet here on the right, you can see that the cerebellum is down in the spinal canal hanging below the foramen magnum. And really, in layman's terms, what we're really talking about, it's sort of like spina bifida in the upper neck. Uh, it's a misalignment or a misplacement of the parts of the neural tube they get in the don't develop fast enough and they can't get inside the head as the head forms so this is another methylation issue um, patients with Arnold Chiari are going to benefit from um, some further investigation on their methyl status leg length inequality can be a you know an issue certainly something that chiropractors are seeing all the time um, in orthopedists but you know anything over two centimeters is pretty severe and what we're looking at it as is as children grow and mature, there's a lot of cell division that has to happen in these long bones. And if there's not enough methyl groups available, these bones cannot divide fast enough. And one side of the body gets an adequate amount and the other side gets a lesser amount. And that's the difference between, you know, the correct length bone and the short bone. And this will obviously create changes in the pelvis, hips, gait, the rest of the body, sports, you name it and likely uh, some scoliosis as a compensation. So limb length inequality is a dead giveaway for methylation issues also. Uh, autism, a big and growing problem with uh, the latest data from 2013 suggesting that one in 50 children in this country will be diagnosed with some form of autism. And since boys experience autism up to four times more, it's my opinion that we may see rates in, in young boys as high as 1 in 20 or even more than that. So it's a big deal. Um, these kids are terrible methylators when they first get started. Their nervous systems are susceptible to toxins, malnutrition, and uh, a lot of the processed foods and even the vaccinations uh, that are bringing toxins into their body. So they need support for detox and methylation nutrients are, are very important in that process. So we're looking at a few more now. We're looking at Turner syndrome. Again, that's uh, a change in the chromosomes coming from mom and dad. Children, boys and girls with Turner syndrome, whatever the syndrome is, they're going to benefit from uh, specific methylation nutrition that's just going to help them overcome some hurdles biochemically. We're looking at congenital heart malformation. This is when, when children are born with a hole in their heart between the atrium and the between the ventricle and the and, um, between ventricles here, it's basically an immature heart. It's a heart that did not fully develop inside the mother. And as we know, 
without folate, without B12, without the other nutrients available, cell division slows down, things develop too slow, they're born in an incomplete or changed pattern. That's methylation problems. So anyone born with a congenital heart malformation or um, any kind of inadequately formed tissue at birth, you've got to be thinking about methylation issues in the mom and the baby. Um, some babies here can uh, they can grow out of this. This will close and they'll develop a normal heart and certainly the right nutrition in mom and baby will help speed that up. Tongue tie, again, a dead ringer for methylation. It's a problem in the middle of the body. It's a deviation from normal and aside from the issues with speaking and swallowing and, and, and those types of problems, there's also when anyone has tongue tie or any of the things I've mentioned today, they're going to need and benefit from nutritional approaches that honor their genes. And so tongue tie is a perfect example of a methylation problem. Um, last one I'm going to talk about is gastrochesis. And the best way to think about this is like a cleft palate of the abdomen. The neural tube was able to close, but not right here. And the baby grew and developed, and so did the intestines, but the intestines developed outside the body wall. So, um, you know, our medical pro profession can help restore this to normal. And in, I have patients who have had this as, as infants and you can't even tell uh, by the time they're teenagers that it, that it had happened. But anyone with a history of things like gastrochesis are going to be, uh, they have a methylation problem. Again, it's a midline defect. It's in the center of the body. It's a change from normal. And that's what you need to be aware of. That's the uh, the heads up there. So I've touched on a, you know just a, a few of the main ones, and I I thank you for your time, and I just want you to uh, think about what I've said. Listen to this video a few times if you want, but you know if you have any questions about methylation or how to treat it or what to do with your own health, um, please visit our website redmountainclinic.com and uh, get in touch with us, and we'll be happy to help you. Um, overcome whatever you're dealing with and, and live the live the life that that you want naturally. Thank you very much.